You know guys, recently I've been thinking and I realized that the country of Russia, the country that I grew up in and the country that I loved kind of really doesn't exist anymore. And also the country that I hoped one day Russia would turn into, that hope is dead as well. And I want to talk about it. Hello Blazers, it's your boy Roman and in today's video guys, I want to do like a little kind of podcast just telling you about my life. Well, actually I want to discuss what it was like growing up in Russia and what perception of Russia I've had throughout my childhood and my teenage years and my early adulthood and where it is now. Because obviously guys, it's changed a lot and uh, I do have a lot of thoughts. So let me start from like ground zero for me personally. I was born in 1998. So obviously by the time where I actually got kind of aware of the world and even understood what a concept of a president is it was maybe already like 2003 and Putin was president then and I remember that as a kid I mean that's the only president I've ever seen I don't remember seeing Yeltsin or anything and uh, I do remember that as a kid I genuinely for some time thought that like Putin and presidents are words that are interchangeable I guess it turns out that I was right because that's the way it turned out for this country yeah I remember growing up and obviously had no clue about politics or anything I really didn't even become political until maybe like 2014 which I'll get to. But I just remember that me, uh, speaking for my generation, kids that are like, you know, 24, 23 now, kids. At that time, the sentiment was that we have a new democratic Russia and that the USSR was kind of, it kind of sucked. Everybody would talk about, you know, the USSR being the suppressive regime and everything. And also, another nice childhood memory. I remember my grandparents and my parents tell me about how, like, during the times of the Soviet Union, you could go to jail for making a joke about Stalin. And I would just remember being a kid and, like, thinking, that is insane. That is so crazy. Thank God. God, that is never gonna happen again. Well, uh, it is happening right now because we literally have a law in Russia that like prohibits you making fun or like insulting the uh, people in power essentially. And people are afraid literally to say anything about our leaders. So it's, it's getting that. It is getting that quick. But as a kid, I remember thinking like, oh my God, that's crazy. It's great that we have this new democratic country of Russia where that would never happen. Boy, was I wrong. So yeah, I was growing up in my hometown of Chelyabinsk and my parents were, you know, uh, we never had money or anything. Like, I remember my parents telling me that specifically the period from like the year 2000 to like maybe 2005 was pretty hot for our family. Like, it was very hard to put food on the table and everything. But nevertheless, I don't remember that because I was a kid and I couldn't tell what, what good life is, right? But obviously it's my childhood, so I have fond memories of that. So let me just skip over. When I was already getting kind of more aware of what was going on, uh, that was already when I was in school. And I specifically remember that the years in Russia, really like, if you really think about it, I think the best years in Russia's current history were probably like from 2006 to like 2012. For the regular Russian people, I mean, that's when people had like the most money, the ruble was in a very good position. Like the average salary in dollars was actually not that bad. And a lot of people would go abroad and travel and there'd be all these economic and investment projects with people coming from the West and investing in Russia and everything. Like it was great. I'm not saying that time was perfect and I'll get to it again again because things that were already red flags already were happening during this time but I was a kid so I wasn't aware of it my parents didn't really afford much but I've seen it like everybody was kind of getting nice phones and everything people were buying computers I mean tech products in general and stuff like that were pretty affordable for Russians back then not super affordable but pretty affordable compared to the state that the country is now these were the years when the internet in Russia actually started getting big as well but yeah it was a booming industry there was a lot of trade with the West and everything it seemed great and and you know, like, looking back at it, like, when I was a kid, I thought that, like, Medvedev, you know, I don't know if you guys know, but between Putin and Putin, we actually had Medvedev, who was another president of Russia, who was kind of considered to be Putin's puppet, which is, you know, kind of true, but he seemed like a good president at the time. I mean, there was some shit that happened during his presidency, though, like, the war with Georgia happened, for example, during his presidency, which is obviously a conflict where I don't think Russia was right. But when I was a kid, I wasn't really aware of it, and Medvedev seemed like, uh, honestly, from my experience back then, growing up, he, he seemed like a pro-European, like, sort of pro-Western leader. I mean, he would do all sorts of stuff, you know? He made a Twitter, he made an Instagram. He, like, hung out with Steve Jobs and Arnold Schwarzenegger and everything. Like, he was much friendlier to, like, Obama, for example, so an Amer the American president, than Putin ever was in office. And for a second there, I really did feel like, obviously, from my perception being a kid, I did feel like, yeah, I mean, Russia is on its way to be, like, a worldly country and also to probably be, like, in the European Union, probably 
probably by the year like 2020. Maybe that's just from my understanding of being a kid, but I kind of do feel like that was a plausible scenario. And Medvedev had a lot of really great people in his team that actually now dissidents who've tried to improve the economy and everything. And uh, it was it was truly a different time. But I feel like really for Russia, it all went downhill in like 2012 when a certain uh, gentleman decided he wants to be president again. And here's the thing, right? So looking back at it now as somebody as an adult who knows much more, the times from like 2000 till 2006 or whatever, 2008 weren't that great either in, this, in terms of like freedom and like human rights and everything. I mean, just take the cases such as like the murder of uh, Anna Politkovskaya, a very famous journalist, or the criminal case against uh, Khodorkovsky, who was a Russian oligarch, kind of, who was destroyed by the government. Things like that were already very iffy, but, you know, as a kid, I didn't I didn't even know about it. So in like 2012, I feel like that's where it kind of started going downhill a little bit, but in 2014, that is where it really went apeshit. I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, Crimea and everything, obviously. That was actually the point, I feel like, where I actually got, uh, started being politically aware. And that's where my sort of uh, largely anti-government stance, that's where it first appeared. Because I remember just like growing up as a kid, and you gotta understand, when I was a little child, we were not being fed any conservative or religious propaganda in school and, st and stuff like that, right? Because right now Russia has these laws against like, you know, uh, LGBT propaganda, and they have the law against uh, insulting the feelings of religious people and stuff. That was not a thing when I was a kid, and the propaganda was different. And on TV, you wouldn't really see much uh, anti-Western sentiments. Of course, it was there, but not as much as right now. I mean, right now is crazy, obviously. So when I was a kid, I was not taught to hate somebody else, you know? Even just watching Russian state media, I was not taught to hate. I wasn't taught to hate Ukrainians. I was not taught to hate Americans. I was not taught to hate Georgians. I was not taught to hate anybody. Now kids are being taught to hate. Now kids are being being taught about like the special operation schools and shit. Kids are being taught about conservative and religious values in school. In 2014, I feel like that is when I noticed it, right? Because I, I still watch, you know, like state television and stuff, but like just the way the sentiment has changed and all this like constant hate of Ukraine on TV and everything, constant hate of Western Europe and uh, America and stuff like that on TV. I was like, what is this? Where did this come from? This is like not right. And the thing is, guys, you gotta understand that like for the elderly people, like for example, even my my parents, especially somebody of like, like my grandparents, etc., were like Soviet people, basically. They've been taught that since they were kids, that America is the evil, is the devil, etc. I mean, I'm not saying America is a perfect country, but anyway. So for the older generations of Russians, this new propaganda, right, directly fed into what they've been taught since they were kids. This is why it works so good. This is why I gotta understand. This is why so many people are blinded by the propaganda, because it's not even 20 years of propaganda at work here. It's like 50, 60. 70. But I didn't grow up like that. And I saw through this. I was like, what is this? So I feel like, yeah, that's probably like 2014, 2015. That's why I started watching like Navalny and stuff. And I got, I got really into like, you know, the oppositional movement, let's say. And ever since then, I've just been seeing my country being turned into something that I can't recognize anymore and something that I would never have thought it could turn into. Because Literally every single year, I'm, I'm just like, okay, come on, it cannot get any worse than this, but it fucking does. So like, let's take the internet, for example. The internet in Russia from like maybe 2006, which is kind of when it started getting really quick and really good, people started having good access to it. Until like 2015, you could just kind of do whatever online, you know? Like the internet was in a different realm, absolutely, completely. You didn't have criminal cases against YouTubers for speaking out against the government. You didn't have criminal cases against YouTubers for, you know, insulting the feelings of religious people. You didn't have criminal cases against uh, people for, like, posting LGBT stuff and saying it's gay propaganda. You didn't have any of that. The internet was completely free. You could say whatever you want. It was freedom. But yeah, after 2016 or, like, 2015 or so, that's when it really started getting bad. Slowly but surely, they started making it less and less and less free and now we reached the point where we're at, you know, where uh, posting any information about the current special operation in Ukraine that doesn't correlate with the state media could lend you for in jail for 15 years this is the point that we've reached and obviously since the internet is not a free place in russia i mean the amount of like self-censorship and shit i had to go through the years is insane and i still do it i don't even know why i still do it maybe this is like stockholm syndrome or something but i still fucking do it so again if anybody is like mad in the comments saying that like i don't talk about ukraine enough or whatever you gotta understand that like i'm literally fucking like i'm literally like fucking brainwashed kind of
to be honest, right? Not in the sense that like, I support this or anything or that I believe the propaganda or anything, but I'm kind of brainwashed in the sense that I feel this, the fucking fear. Like I'm scared to speak my mind out, you know what I mean? And when my mom messages me shit saying like, hey Roman, please promise you're not gonna say anything po about politics on your channel. Roman, can you please promise that you will not talk about politics or anything? Because these are Soviet people who've grown up in a system where if you do that, you get fucked up and they might not even realize the full extent of what what it is like in Russia right now, like with the laws and everything, but just that old memory of how it was in the Soviet Union dictates them to behave like this. And this is like a generational thing where I feel the same way. I mean, it's fucking insane. Holy shit. Like for real, I do think that like my generation, people who are like 20 something Russians that grew up in, uh, who grew up in one country and now live in a completely different country and don't understand what the hell is going on with it. I feel like we will have a very big, like just generational trauma, I guess, from having to double speak all the time, from having to hide your real opinions and just the overall oppression that goes on, you know? I really think that's the thing, because as you can see, the way these Soviet people, like my parents, my grandparents, etc., how hard it hit them, that they still think like this, right? They have a lot of generational trauma that, you know, comes from the policies of the Soviet Union, and we will have that as well, which is fucking awful. But yeah, one thing I want to say is that, like, regardless, still, even though it was getting less and less free online, and I could see that we're getting more and more authoritarian by the year, I still felt like, honestly, there was always a little bit of hope for Russia to open up and to become a worldly country, and that all of this will pass, you know? I would take, like, uh, the 2018 uh, World Cup, for example. Uh, super, like, awesome international events, so many foreigners came, everybody was hanging out with foreigners, you know, drinking together, having fun and I was like I was there I was in Yekaterinburg in 2018 during the uh, World Cup and there were people from Japan and Senegal there <laughs> Okay, zoom in. Zoom, zoom in. Uh, zoom in. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. And I was like, this is awesome. This is what I want. This is what I fucking want. I don't want to hate anybody. I want cooperation. I want free trade. I want to be able to travel. I want to be able to see people from different walks of life, from different nations, because these people are fucking cool. And it's cool to be a worldly citizen. But obviously, that is not the direction that this country has uh, gone into. And, you know, all the illusions about and all the hopes of being like an open and free and uh, worldly country one day, they're gone. They're fucking gone. Like, I don't think a lot of Russians really realize how much of a tragedy this is. Obviously, for Ukraine, it's a huge tragedy, and I cannot, like, you know, state this enough. Obviously, the average Russian right now is suffering less than the average Ukrainian. That is not a disputable fact, but I'm still saying that this situation is a tragedy for Russia and for Russians as well, and I think that a lot of people, especially those who are supporting this and who are, like, walking around with the fucking Z on their shirt or whatever the fuck, on or on their car, these people do not realize how much of a tragedy this is. I'm not even talking about the sanctions and everything. I'm not even talking about the fact that everybody's gonna be poor as fuck. There's gonna be no decent food or anything. There's gonna be like the planes, airplanes won't even fucking work. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about just like the hope for this country to be happy and free. It's gone. It's not there anymore. It will, it's like, it probably will not happen now in maybe like 20, 30 years. I mean, you guys gotta understand I'm a pessimist though, so I'll never think good things. But like, honestly, before this whole thing, I was kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, we kind of live in an oppressive country, but still, you know, it's not that bad, right? You can still do business. You can still visit other countries. You can still travel, you know, like, you know, we Russians, we love to bitch and complain about our country all the time. But now looking back at it, you know, looking back at what Russia was before February, of 2022, I'm like, damn, it was actually kind of not bad, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe that's Stockholm Syndrome again, probably, I don't fucking know. But yeah, like, literally, in the blink of an eye, holy shit, it got so much worse. And again, I don't think people realize how much of a tragedy this is for the fate of Russia and for its future, but also for the perception of Russians in the world community, obviously. I would say, you know, that, like, my biggest dream ever since I was a little kid, or, like, a teenager, I guess, ever since maybe I was, like, 14 or something, I will, I've always dreamed, like, it would be awesome if Russia would, like, cooperate with the West. It would be awesome, like, if Russians had, like, like, visa-free travel to the European Union, for example. That was, like, my dream, dude. I was, like, always, like, yes, I want to go there. And I have been to the European Union a little bit, but uh, I have no idea when I'll be the next time, obviously. And, yeah, I wanted Russia to be a country where everybody could feel, you know, 
accepted and welcomed all races, all nationalities, all genders, all political views, unless you're like a fucking hardcore Nazi or whatever. All sexualities, like everybody, right? But yeah, it's not happening. So yeah, this is like, it's a country that has so much potential. So many great people, honestly. Like the young people in Russia are fucking genius, dude. But they're all leaving now. They're fucking gone. Okay, so yeah, I have absolutely no clue what is gonna happen to Russia. It's just like, it's just super depressing and I just, it's like part of my identity is being destroyed because I had hopes for this country because I know it can be way better than this. But yeah, uh, it's all over. Anyways, guys, yeah, uh, I guess this is pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. I just kind of had this, you know, feeling inside of me for a while, you know, just wanted to talk about this, about, like, my dream of Russia being crushed. I don't know if anybody even cares, and I know I'm gonna get comments on this video saying, Oh, bro, why are you complaining? Ukrainians are getting bombed. I'm... Can I live? Please. Anyways, guys, if you did enjoy this video, though, please make sure to slap the like on it. If you guys want to see more, subscribe to the channel, you know. You can as well donate to my Bitcoin and stuff down in the description if you want to support me additionally. And yeah, I want to just again thank everybody for their support and everybody who's sending me supportive messages. It really does matter and really does a lot. Thank you guys for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.